2 and 3 fourths times 2 and 1 half, or two mixed numbers using an area model. So I'm going to start with the 2 and 3 fourths. Think about how many boxes do I need to draw in order to represent two holes in 3 fourths of a fraction. I am going to need three boxes. I am going to create these boxes using a dark line so I can distinguish between my whole numbers and my fractions. So there are three whole boxes right there. Now think about how many boxes am I going to need to draw in order to represent two and one half. I am going to need three boxes. Two boxes for the whole number and one box for the fraction. They are going to share this first box right here. So I'm going to draw three boxes going down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue these lines across and continue the lines going down to make an array. Okay? Now this side right here I'm going to represent two and three fourths. So I'm going to need to break up this column into fourths. And I'm going to highlight two whole boxes. And three fourths of the last box. So I have two and three fourths represented. I'm going to draw a box around my equation to separate it from the problem. Okay, now in the rows, I am going to represent 2 and 1 half. So I need to separate this last row in half. And now I am going to highlight 2 and 1 half. They are going to share this first box right here. So that's going to be one box one hole, two holes, and one half of a hole. The last step in the picture in the coloring portion of this problem is you need to look at the rows and the columns and wherever they meet you also must color in. I'm going to color the boxes or the areas that they have in common green since this first box was also green because it's what um, two and three-fourths and two and one-half had in common. So this first blue box and this first yellow box, if I follow it all the way in, it's going to meet at this box right here. So I'm going to color this box in. This box will be part of my problem. I'm going to do the same thing with each of these fourths right here and with this blue whole box. They meet right here, they meet right here, and they meet right here. Okay, now that I've finished my second row, I'm going to move on to my third row, or the half. I'm going to follow the half and the yellow box to the middle, and they meet right here. And I'm going to follow each of the fourths from three-fourths and the halves, and they meet right here. So when you're finished, if you did this accurately, you should end up with um, either a square or a rectangle, a small little array within your larger array. Now all we're focusing on are the highlighted pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to label all of the pieces that are one whole. So I look at this first green square and the entire square is colored in so I know that that is one whole. My second square, it's all yellow. The entire square is colored in so that's another whole. Down below, I have a blue box that's completely colored in, so that's one hole. And then I have another green hole right there. So I have four holes that are completely colored in. I'm going to draw that down here. And now I'm going to cross them out because I've already used those in my equation down below. Okay, now I'm going to look at the three yellow pieces over here. What? fraction do each of these yellow pieces represent of the whole? Since there are four total pieces in that box, I know each of these yellow pieces are going to represent one-fourth. I 
underneath it, I have three pieces shaded and four pieces in total. So I know each of those green pieces are also going to represent one fourth. Okay, and in the very bottom box in that third column, I have three smaller pieces. I need to determine what each of those pieces are going to be represented by, what fraction they're going to be represented by. In order to figure that out, I can look at this box and I can count how many total pieces there are. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Since there are eight total pieces, that means each of these green boxes are going to represent one eighth. Okay, I have two more boxes that I have not labeled. If I look at each of those boxes, I know that each one of them are represented by one half. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my fractions. I'm going to see how many holes I can take out. I know that one half plus one half is one hole. So I'm going to cross out these halves and I'm going to replace it down here with one hole. I need to think in my head how many fourths equal one hole. I know that four fourths equal one hole, so I'm going to cross out four of my fourths and I'm going to replace it down below with one hole. All right, now I have only fractions left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine them to make it easier for me to add. I know that I have two fourths left, one fourth and one fourth. I know that one fourth plus one fourth is two fourths. So I'm going to write that down here. And then I have three eighths left in the bottom square. So I know one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth is three eighths. And I'm going to add that down here. Okay, so if I look at my final problem, I have four plus one plus one plus two fourths plus three eighths. I'm going to separate the holes. I know four plus one plus one is six. And now all I have left to do is add the fractions, 2 fourths and 3 eighths. Now I know in an addition problem, I need to find a common denominator. In 4 and 8, I know that if I were to count up by 4s and count up by 8s, the smallest common denominator I could have would be 8. I'm going to do the addition problem over here. So if I find an equivalent fraction for each of these with 8 is the denominator, I know that 3 eighths is going to remain 3 eighths. 4 times what number equals 8? What did I need to multiply the denominator of 4 by to get to 8? I needed to multiply 4 times 2 to get 8. So whatever I do to the denominator, I must also do to the numerator. And I know 2 times 2 equals 4. So my problem I'm left with is 3 eighths plus 4 eighths, and I know 3 plus 4 is 7, and my denominator stays the same. So I'm going to bring this down here. My fractions are equal up to 7 eighths. 2 fourths plus 3 eighths equals 7 eighths. If I add 6 wholes plus 7 eighths, my final answer is 6 and 7 eighths.